And as you see in this little window, we have a program called Vassal Open. It is a uh, tabletop simulation game that you can download modules for, install them, and you can play them. In this list, I have three different versions of X-Wing, uh, Star Wars Armada, and Imperial Assault. I don't know how to play the later two. I prefer to learn the game physically with the miniatures first before I move on to this. But since I play a lot of Star Wars X-Wing, I wanted to show how to start a game. And I will go into this as well on Tabletop Simulator once I get uh, more frequent with it, I guess you would say. So first thing off, you have to make sure you have the latest version of Vassal, which I just downloaded. I will put in the description on the YouTube video of this, or if you are watching on YouTube, check down in the description, uh, where to download everything. You need Vassal, then you need the module. Now, to get the module to open, you will need to double-click the icon after you have Vassal installed. And then it'll go through a loading process, and once it's done loading all the assets, it will pop up into this window. Uh, you, you can go into offline mode and play by yourself. You will need to switch sides constantly to move everything around, or you can go to online mode, which I will show you here, because this is where a majority of everything is. Now you have a basic chat that you can get. You have the list of rooms and you have the list of people waiting to play. Uh, you can do test room and I'm in here then I can come up and lock the room and the room is locked. Pretty much to start a new room where you can host a new game you just name it and you hit enter. And then if you have it unlocked anybody can join and anybody can watch. And the community is very nice and vassal. Very nice. Now, to get started, first things first, you have to go to File and go to New Game. What this means is you're just, you have the room open, but you have no game going, so you have to start the game. Then it asks you, who do you what do you want to do? Player 1 through 8. And you can also be, just watch the game if you want to. But we want to go to Player 1 since we are starting and then you have a good selection of boards uh, you got deep space light starfield nebulas i think nope i was wrong okay so i'm gonna just do deep space and then you click next you have three by three and three by six and as you can tell nothing pops up after that point what do you do well up here you have become player number map pieces you want to click map now this normally opens up like that and what this window shows you is this is the part or the outside of the board areas where you can put stuff I normally just shrink this down and then go like so that way you only have the board now what you'll have to do is if you're a player one you click the one it will bring up your hand in this selection people can see what you have but they can't edit anything and the one thing it does hide is when you do your maneuver selections which we'll get into in a minute but once you're in your hand you click on the damage deck you have the option to spawn the original damage deck the second damage deck and each damage deck for the large ships just click once on the second version because that's the most recent one and it says you have 33 out of 33. And these right here are for your large ships. Each of your upgrades will come from, or your damage decks will be in there. And then this little window right here next to the damage deck is your dice. We will get into this here in a minute. But first I want to show you how to build your team. So at this point I got to pull my phone out. Because I need to look at my team builder. Alright, squad builder is open and we're going to select the list. I'll probably do the list I've been practicing on, which is Chewy and Chopper. As soon as I see it, there it is. Now, once you're with the window open, you have the dice window open, you can just click on pieces, and it'll bring up what you have. It's separated into Rebels, Imperial, Scum, Upgrades. These are the tokens. Uh, movement and range, which you don't really need unless you do collisions which then 
they have the collision turns so you can do that really easily and if you want there's missions and stuff that you can do in here as well but first we're gonna go to rebel because like I said I have Chewy and I have Chopper now one thing to note is this little bar right here whenever you select a new ship you haven't used you you have to move it over I think it resets after each time but I could be wrong but we're gonna grab that and then we need the dial and then what I tend to do is bring this over Oh crap, I just screwed that up. There we go. What I do is I put this right here for the information on the ship. And then I put this, I just set on the map for now. And I just leave the dial right there. Just for now. Because really, as you can see here, the cards have no information. So I just will bring this out for a minute so I make sure I get the name right. Then I right click and I set pilot name. And I just type in chopper. And then this one, I just hit uh, right click and delete or control D. That way I know the dial is named right. And then from here, I'm going to get out my YT. I'm going to do movement. And then we'll do the dial. And then I will do the ship. Now on here I'm gonna just put I'm gonna just name it Chewy because that's what I do. Uh, and then one thing to note is your ships here do not actually have uh, stats. We'll bring them over here. So what you're gonna have to do is add the stat information. That is the very like most important thing. So how you do that is you right click and you go down to set stats. Right, sorry, set stats, there we go. So, shift and then the number. So we're going to do increase pilot, or alt, sorry, alt and the letter. So we're doing increase pilot. Chewy is a six, or five, I believe. Yes, Chewy's a five. So I'm going to go uh, alt P. And you see the orange number moving up. And then the shields are, our attack is A. Defense is D, hole is H, and shields are S. So we're going to do Alt Attack, which is 3. Alt D, which is 1. And shields are 5. And then H is 8. This is very important because if you don't have the stats right, it gets kind of hard to do the game. That's, that's one very important thing. And then we'll do the same thing for Chopper, which is 4, and then 4, no hole, or not hole, but no defense, so do H 10 times. And then 6. And just like that, our ships are set up. Now the one thing we need to do is get the actual tokens. So what I like to do is I want to shift S. Okay. So shift S increases this. I want to do that to five. And then I'm going to clone it. And then I'll shift S one more time. I keep these next to the ship because I like changing the shield tokens more than I like changing the actual stats. That way, if you play again, you don't have to lower stuff. And there is stress tokens. I bring one out for each ship. Yeah, focus tokens. I will make a stack. Make sure. Shift F, okay. A four of those. Same with the evade. Crap. Oh, you can't actually do that with those. Okay. Well, I, I'll just have two here. Then I can clone them as I need them. And then what else do we need? Well, we can also do this too if you really want to. Uh, I don't do this. This is the whole icon. Uh, just because you got the damage deck here and you can just lay your cards on and count. But that's up to you. 
But now since we got this stuff set, I'm going to show you how to actually set up, finish setting up your team. So we're going to move all of these guys here back over to here. And then we're going to go to upgrades. Now, my list for Chewbacca is Predator, Gunner, 3PO, and Title. So, let me get the Gunner. And then 3PO. There's the crew cards. And then Titles. Millennium Falcon, and usually with this, they update with the stuff that isn't out yet. That's how I've been able to practice with the Ghost, is I've played on here a lot. But now we need Elite. Elite, where you at? There you are. And Predator. Now if you need more space, you can just move it over a little bit. And just go like so. I tend to try to make this stuff very nice and organized. And I move this down here. And all of these I keep at the top. As best I can. Because you never know when you're going to need one. And I usually keep only one of each. Uh, just so you can copy and clone it. But now we're going to move on to Chopper. Chopper is the one I'm having the questions on. So we need Auto Blaster Turret, Fire Control System, Lando, which is the one uh, that most people don't suggest running, but I have better luck with my evade dice than normal. And then Dash. Now what we're going to do, and then you also need to go and get asteroids. So you just drag them out and place them. Make sure I got the one. Oh, sorry. That's the ones I like. Okay, we'll delete. Actually, no, we'll just delete that one. I have my three asteroids that I would place out. I got my ships here. And usually I keep everything in the center. And when it's time to place, you just hit the 3x3 three three grid. Now what this does is it allows you to know, all right, there's range 2. And you, if you want to know, you can just right click, range finder. And it's pretty accurate with the inner square being range 2 from the edge of the board. And then you have... This part right here are the rectangles on each side is your range one from the side and you just turn off range finder and then the other person places and then you place again just like so and then you would go to your placement. I would like to state I haven't played any any tournaments so I hope I'm doing the placement right, and if I'm not, please correct me. And then I would go to him. And then. Now, from here, it's pretty simple what to do. Close out of this window. Say you have somebody, you toggle off the grid, and you, you can look at what their squad is so you know, and then you click it again, turn it off. Now, for the rest of the game, you don't look at their uh, information because. I'll highlight, I'll select Chewie and highlight. With uh, comma and period, you can change your maneuvers. And that can be seen in your hand. So the hand makes it so you can't do that. Here's an example. Say I have this out here, and out here on the board, you can see it. So we are going to click reveal. That way, when the other person looks at it, it won't can't be seen. But we're going to go left and right on here and you see I'm changing between a couple different maneuvers but you also see in the chat that a uh, legal action has been done which means I can't you can't alter your moves once it's on the board it, it sets it up for you and in the chat it lets you know this and then when you flip it it tells you what you flipped 
So that's why I keep it over in my hand and I pick the maneuver that I want. Right click reveal, it hides it and you just place it on the board. And then same thing with this. Just right click reveal, place it on the board. And just for the sake of it, I am going to become player two. And I'm going to put a piece out on the board. We'll say this. Okay, so it is. And the arrow keys rotate your ship. And let's see some of the stats real quick. Three, uh, oh, one, two, three, four, one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just for the sake of showing you, we're gonna do a quick maneuver here, but I'm gonna s switch back to player one. And you could do this single player or on one computer without being online. Uh, the difference is you'll just have to have one person like close their eyes or look away and you just keep switching between players to do everything. But just to show you how to do this here, we'll reveal and it's a four forward. So you right click on the ghost, template move, four forward. And then say yeah, I'm gonna do, okay, I'm gonna do Lando. So I right click on the dice and I click roll two dice. I get one evade. So we take this evade and bring it right out here. And you just move your token up with it. And now we go to Chewy, reveal, four forward. And then same thing. Let's clone it, move it. And then from here, I'll sw close my hand out, switch player to, and uh, I'll do a four forward as well. Now you can go right click, show firing arc, and this will tell you what range you are. Your first one's one, two, then three. Everybody's in range three of each other, so we can sh turn fire and arc off. Now we're going to clear the dice, so you right click the green dice, click clear. And we're rolling three attack dice on the ghost, range three. So I got one hit. Let me switch over to player one, and we'll do this. Now, I can roll one defense dice, anyway I have no dice because I'm at range one three and I evade it so we clear and now it's my turn to attack I get four attack dice or first off I it's chewy so it's three attack dice one hit reroll one uh, still blank and then we switch back over and I get two evade dice but range three I evade that one and it's really automated really really well done it's just you have to get used to the multiple windows that is the biggest part about this so now it's the ghost turn I roll four dice that's a good hit let's see if that thing can evade it evades one so you cancel out this hit and then it's three crits so you lose three shields and I just moved it so when you move it like that you can click undo undo again and it'll move it back and then this is why I have these tokens out it helps with the everything but let's say we had spawn a damage deck wait want to make sure of this okay I don't want to screw up and spawn a second damage deck so we're gonna spawn a damage deck here and now let's say we didn't have any shields and we had three crits. So you would go one, two, three, highlight, bring them over. And then you would separate. Now with them separated, you just right click, flip, 
and it tells you what it is in the chat. And then from there, this is the only downfall of Vassal, is you have to know what the damage cards do. If you don't have your damage deck out, or you can search online, there's a couple sites that uh, me and my friend found to tell you what stuff is. That way, everybody in the game knows what you have. And then after that, you just highlight them all and drag them over into your hand. And you just place them on the card. Or next to the card. And do it in a way where you can count. Instead of them being all piled up on top of each other where you can't see how many there are, like so. You would be, just have them out one right after another, like so. That way you know there's three there. But since it's damaged uh, cockpit, um, usually what I do is I flip it face down and I draw an extra card. But as long as you remember, you know what it is, you can tell everything. This is pretty much all you do to play Vassal. And say you drew one too many cards, you just right click, return to deck. Or you say you your ship died. And that's all you do is just, if you're done, you return everything to the deck. Or you can just close out, go to file, quit, and it'll quit out of everything for you. It's a very simple thing to use once you get the hang of it. That's the main part, is the learning curve. The learning curve is really, really uh, big. Just because of how many windows there are, how to get through everything. Uh, there's n notes you can put in. There's also the guide for shortcut and everything. Uh, this will walk you through the shortcuts. Like, let's see, where is it? There's a thing where how to save a squad. This one's a little bit more trickier, but it, if you follow it to the letter, uh, you'll get it done really easily uh, and there's also movement shortcuts which I don't normally look at I find it easier just to control or not control but right click and select it the main thing that's a little harder is the barrel rolls that one I usually just put the one token out next to it and move it myself but this is Vassal. It's pretty fun, pretty easy to do. I, if you guys want to play, my name on there is just Joe. Just see me pop up, and you can message and invite me to play. And then you set the room up. The one thing to note for sure, though, after you do your uh, maneuver, so with that whole attack, it would look like this Boba attacks Boba versus uh, Chopper. R3 prime that's what you type in then you it was two blanks one hit and then set you make sure you type in set because that tells the other player it's okay for them to do their dice now and then with the evade it was one evade set and every time you pick uh, every time you do something, you would just have to say set. The easiest way to play this, though, is over Skype. Have whoever you're playing with over Skype or on something to talk to them with, and you run through it really easily. You can also set up, uh, what do you call it, Epic Games, and run through that, because like I showed you earlier, they do have the bigger ships in here. Uh... I have not used the, these in this mode. I've only used the smaller ships because I use this to practice. And it's very good practice. You have a chance of playing against other people that are in the top tier of players. And then you also have people like me who are just starting out playing more competitively. I usually play just for fun and a lot of my lists are just for fun because they get stomped pretty quickly. Uh, but that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, favorite, share, and comment. And if you have a certain build that you like, let me know. Uh, this is my Chopper Chewy build just because I like flying Chopper a lot. But I also want it like the Falcon in it just for the sake of having the Falcon in it. Because it gets kind of hard building the Ghost with getting the ships that I want because of how much it costs to get everything in. 
usually I only can get like a Y wing or uh, and an A wing in or two A wing something like that. So it's just to build something different that other people don't have, hopefully. And since none of my friends have the ships that I have, that when we play, this is different. And it's a little harder.